Hello everyone and welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing okay, but unfortunately I have to phone in from home because of the current situation. But I'm still excited because today I'm making something that I've wanted to make for a very long time. Cyclopropane is the smallest cycloalkane and it's rather unusual because of how strained it is. Most of its strain comes from angle strain and each carbon has four substituents and the farthest apart that four electron domains could be is 109.5 degrees. So ideally, the angle between the bonds would be 109.5 degrees. But because it is three carbon atoms in, a, in an equilateral triangle, the angle between the atoms has to be 60 degrees. So that's very, very far from ideal. The carbon-carbon bonding orbitals aren't actually 60 degrees apart. They are closer to the ideal angle of 109.5. I think it's 104 degrees apart. Um, but that means that they can't overlap as much, which makes a weaker bond. And also, because the, the orbitals are farther out, they're not, not between the nuclei, that means that the electron density is kind of following a curved path in the bonds. And this is sometimes referred to as bent bonds, which is very interesting. <laughs> Cyclopropane was first prepared in 1881 by the Wurtz reaction. Um, that's a carbon-carbon coupling reaction between two alkyl halides. Um, I put bromine here, but that could be anything. Um, using metallic sodium, um, and you can see if, if these R's were connected to each other, and the N's were connected, then we could actually end up forming a ring, and that's exactly what we do in the case of cyclopropane. The reaction starts with sodium donating its electron. Um, the, the bromine ends up breaking away and it leaves a single electron to create a uh, radical on the terminal carbon. Then another sodium can come along, donate its electron, and then the carbon can have a pair and that makes a carbanion. And as you can imagine, this is a pretty good nucleophile and here is a partially positive carbon. Um, so that can attack there and it pushes off the bromine forming the desired product, cyclopropane. This isn't the only reaction happening, obviously. Uh, the other end of this carbon chain, it could have the same thing, so you could have um, a radical on both ends, and those could join, making cyclopropane. Um, and there are a number of side reactions that can happen, too. This radical can react with one on a different molecule. And also, this nucleophilic substitution, this can happen on another 1,3-dipromopropane, or a, a radical. But luckily, in this case, the intramolecular reaction is more favorable because it doesn't require a collision for that to happen. Um, and also, this carbon ion, that could um, pull a hydrogen off of something and eliminate bromine and make some alkenes. So it's a little bit messy, and yields are going to be poor, but it'll be fun nonetheless. The first thing I needed to get was some dry ice. Unfortunately, the minimum order was 10 pounds, so a bunch of it ended up getting wasted, but it's still pretty fun to put it in water. I started out by drying my glassware. Um, we're going to be using sodium and don't want any water to get into the system. Now, sodium is fun to cut up, but it's also kind of difficult and tedious. It's a soft metal, but it's still a metal, and it takes a while. Here is all the sodium I cut up and transferred into this flask. Next, I started fitting together the apparatus. I used a Claisen adapter. addition funnel, and a gram condenser. I know not many people like gram condensers, and I don't really either, but I wanted a long path for any of the bromopropane to condense on, and I didn't want to have to use water. Some tubing connected the top of the condenser to this part of the apparatus, which is just a collecting flask with a Dewar condenser on top and a drying tube. I then tried to insulate a beaker well to serve as the uh, bath to contain the dry ice and acetone. 
I then failed to pour in some 1-3 dibromopropane and then blocked it with my arm for the rest of the shot. I started filling up the Dewar condenser with some acetone initially, and then the bath below as well. And then I carefully put in a too large chunk of dry ice. I then continued a bit more carefully to put in the rest of the dry ice until it got down to the right temperature. I then did the same for the bath below. You can see once it got down below the minimum temperature of my thermometer, I was ready. I slowly dripped in the 1,3 dibromopropane and it didn't really seem to do anything. I then added a bit more, and when there was no significant exotherm after a while, I started heating the flask gently with a heat gun. After hitting about 130 degrees, a reaction finally kicked off. There was bubbling, which suggested formation of the cyclopropane and a formation of a white solid on the surface of the sodium. This would be sodium bromide. You could see the 1,3 dibromopropane started refluxing at one point, so it got very hot. After everything was dripped in, the reaction started to subside, so I heated it some more to get any final remaining product. I then pulled away the bath to see if I had gotten anything. This looked very promising, and as a preliminary test, I checked to see if anything was flammable. Then I took away the bath again to get a better look. Next, a flammability test. This gave me some real flashbacks. Because it's so reactive, cyclopropane should actually react with hydrobromic acid to make one bromopropane. Unfortunately, it evaporated so fast there wasn't enough left to properly conduct this test. I'm really happy with how this went. I'm a little bit disappointed that I didn't get to really do any reaction with it other than burning, but I am very confident that I did make cyclopropane because based on the reactants that I put in, and if you saw the photo at the end there, it was boiling at, at least with my crude measurement, negative 31 degrees or so. So there's really nothing else it could have been. And I, in my searching around, I didn't find any other photo documentation of liquid cyclopropane. So this video might be the only photo slash video evidence of liquid cyclopropane in existence, so that's really cool. If you haven't seen it, I have a Patreon with 13 amazing patrons. Jay, Applied Science, Rodenide, The Gayest Person on YouTube, Mortlet, Oliver, Mackie, Andrew, Aussie Chemist, Cliff's Music Lab, Daniel, Josie, and Timothy. Because of having to buy the dry ice, this was probably my most expensive video ever. So thank you guys so much for supporting me and allowing me to keep doing this. And to everyone else that's watching this video, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe if you want. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a good one.